Hey guys, hola amigos, hoy caras. Today you're going to learn the secret sauce to taking a garage band recording and making it sound like a real record. So I've been recording now for some 30 years and I started way back on a Tascam 8-track with a regular 8th inch tape in it. And for all these years, uh, I was always trying to get the stuff to sound as good as what I heard on a record, like any of us would do. I would A-B this stuff with my favorite recordings, and uh, I got kind of close, but it never quite sounded right. It always felt like something was missing. And the irony is that I found out only about five years ago when working with a, a well-known producer that it wasn't something was missing. I was actually doing too much. And... That too much is something that is solved by this one plugin that is the most important thing you can have in your studio, and that is the channel strip. Um, the channel strip is a digital emulation of the channels on a mixing board, the old SSL consoles or whatever the console was. Uh, there's a few products for it out there, um, and they're all pretty good, but the one that I like, and I'm going to load just one of the channels now, is the Waves SSL bundle. Uh, the reason I like the Waves SSL bundle is because of the presets that are included in it. You'll see there are a ton of presets and there are presets from different producers. Uh, so I don't have to sit here and work with all these intimidating knobs. I mean, there's plenty of lessons on what they do and whatnot, but I have found that the presets that are included with the SSL bundle do the job. I almost never have to adjust anything on here other than maybe a couple small tweaks on levels. Usually if I don't like the channel uh, setting I'm using, I just pick a different preset instead of tweaking the one that's there and I always land something good. So what I want to do first is, this is an instrumental track of mine that I'm working on. I'm just going to play you a piece of it and I'm going to turn the channel strips off so that you can hear what it sounds like old school for me before I discovered channel strips and then I'll turn them on and play them and then we'll talk about what's going on. Now, the instruments coming in sound pretty good. You can hear them. They're, they're, it's, it's not an awful recording, but it's still a little bit mushy. It doesn't sound like a quote-unquote record. Um, so let me turn the channel strips on and play it back, and then we'll talk about what's going on. Right, you can see it's much clearer and cleaner. Every instrument has its space. Now let's talk about why. All right, we're gonna pull up the channel strips on the rhythm guitars. I got a pair of stereo rhythm guitars here. I'm just using the guitar preset that comes with the SSL. I'm going to solo the two tracks together and I want you to listen to them with the strips on. Okay, now I'm gonna turn the channel strips off and play it back. Now I think most guitar players will agree that it actually sounds better with the channel strips off. It's a fuller sound, it's beefier, it's the guitar sound you like when you're playing. The problem is that that sound that you like is not what sounds good in a mix. You have to carve out spaces for the other instruments and they all have to have their own little spot in the mix and what the channel settings do, the channel strips with the presets, is in this instance a lot of like the low mids they carve out area for the bass so that it sits well in the mix turn it off start occupying a lot of space Yeah, so when you turn them off, they occupy a lot of space and it starts to get muddy. You can hear just from the rhythm guitars that it's not quite working right without the strips on. And so you'll notice here, the only place I don't have channel strips on, well, I don't have it on this one channel, uh, channel three, which is back at the intro of the song because it's just a sound effect by itself. Um, but I don't have them on the drums. I'm using Easy Drummer here. There's no need to have the strips on this particular plugin because this was already recorded extremely well, stripped and uh, 
compressed and EQ'd the way it needs to be. So there's nothing that needs to be added to it. If you were doing acoustic drums, you would have to have strips for each one of the drums, which the SSL plugin also has uh, settings for. So the other thing I want to show you is the on my lead guitars. It's a little trick I do. So this is kind of a uh, little bonus tip bonus. For lead guitars, I don't put guitar as well as for the rhythm guitars. You'll see I have a lead solo violin. This is Tom Russo's plugin. Uh, I just found that for leads, uh, for my sound, I like to have it uh, have a bit more of a stringy quality to it. I don't know how to say it. I'm going to change it so you can hear. And that's just a personal preference. But this goes to showing you that you can play around with some of these presets until you find what you like as far as mixing them all together. They don't have to be exactly the one that's chosen for it. So that's fine. It's getting quieter. So I found that when I have guitar on the rhythm guitars and guitar on the lead guitars, sometimes they can compete a little bit, even though they're octaves apart. Um, so that's just my little bonus trick for you. Those channel strips are really important and well worth the investment. I hope you could hear the difference, and I hope uh, if you've been struggling with trying to get clean, clear mixes and get the sound you want, that this helps you get to where you're going, just like it did when uh, my producer told me about it. As always, have a good one. See you next time. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.